There are many things, the knowledge of which is of little or no profit to the soul. They who are learned are desirous to appear and to be called wise. The Imitation of Christ. Brethren in Christ, laude to Jesus Christus in sequela. This is Timothy Flanders of the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to the Imitation of Christ, part two of, how many chapters is this? 200, something like that. We're reading through the Imitation of Christ. This is an offering to the Fellowship of St. Anthony. Uh, the Fellowship of St. Anthony is a lay sodality within the Meaning of Catholic. And this lay sodality offers up penance and sacrifices for the clergy and seminarians. And Meaning of Catholic is a lay apostolate. So we're a bunch of lay people trying to live out our lay vocation. And one of the ways that we do that is through the Fellowship of St. Anthony. So what this consists of is doing penance on Wednesdays and Fridays during the time after Pentecost. So today is a day of penance. And, and so we're offering up penance. So if you want to join us in doing this, please join us. Uh, it's part of the guild, so you'd have to be a part of the guild. But if you can't afford to be a part of the guild, you can always join for free um, the Fellowship of St. Anthony. So you can go to patreon.com slash meaning of Catholic. We also need your support in general. So if you can be a part of the guild that helps us, uh, it's been a difficult financial year for, for everybody. Uh, but if you can afford $5 a month, $10 a month, that just helps meaning of Catholic do its work uh, as a lay apostolate. Uh, we don't run any ads on YouTube uh and uh we don't make money out of youtube it's just a free content so please be uh become a supporter at meaningofcatholic.com or at patreon.com slash meaning of catholic or you can also donate or you can contact me if you can't afford it you just need a free spot free memberships um just go to meaningofcatholic.com slash contact so chapter two uh what's great about the imitation of christ is that every you can easily read one chapter a day and we're, we're reading one chapter a week just because I don't have time to make this video every single day. But uh, if you want to read ahead, go for it. So <clears throat> here's chapter two, book one, chapter two. All men naturally desire to know, but what does knowledge avail without the fear of God? Indeed, a humble husbandman that serves God is better than a proud philosopher who, neglecting himself, considers the course of the heavens. He who knows himself well is mean in his own eyes and is not delighted with being praised by men. If I should know all things that are in the world and should not be in charity, what would it avail me in the sight of God who will judge me by my deeds? Leave off that excessive desire of knowing because there is found therein much distraction and deceit. They who are learned are desirous to appear and to be called wise. There are many things the knowledge of which is of little or no profit to the soul. He is very unwise who attends to other things than what may serve his salvation. Many words do not satisfy the soul, but a good life gives ease to the mind, and a pure conscience affords a great confidence in God. The more and better thou knowest, the more heavy will be thy judgment, unless thy life be also more holy. Be not therefore puffed up with any art or science, but rather fear because of the knowledge which is given thee. If it seems to thee that thou knowest many things that understandest them well enough, know at the same time that there are many more things of which thou art ignorant. Be not high-minded, but rather acknowledge thy ignorance. Why wouldst thou prefer thyself to anyone, since there are many more learned and skillful in the law than thyself? If thou wouldst know and learn anything to the purpose, love to be unknown and esteemed as nothing. This is the highest science and most profitable lesson truly to know and despise ourselves. To have no opinion of ourselves and to think always well and commendably of others is great wisdom and high perfection. If thou shouldst see another openly sin or commit some heinous crime, yet thou oughtest not to esteem thyself better, because thou knowest not how long thou mayest remain in a good state. We are all frail, and see thou think no one more frail than thyself. This reading is is just so powerful to me personally, because obviously I have to, <laughs> I have this job that, that uh, I'm a lay leader in, uh, in this lay apostolate in the trad movement at one Peter five. And I'm basically in a position where 
I felt I felt convicted um, uh, a couple of years ago, and I was actually reading Humility of Heart, which is another uh, a modern classic, less classic than this one, but uh, where it, it said that if you have knowledge and you're able to teach others, but you refrain from doing so, um, you're a coward. And I had always tried to avoid this to a degree because of these very things. I mean, I think this is, this is something that really makes me tremble. Um, be not therefore puffed up with any art of science, but rather fear, fear because of the knowledge which is given thee. The more and better thou knowest, the more heavy will be thy judgment, unless thy life be also more holy. It is a great burden to know a bunch of things. And um, we can, I mean, I, I, I myself tremble because, uh, because I, I know some things and I'm trying to share them just to help other Catholics so we can help each other. Um, and encourage the doubtful. That's one of the purposes of this apostolate uh, to help Catholics through the crisis as much as they can to not lose their faith, to catechize their children. Um, but it's a fearful thing. It's really a fearful thing because I'm going to be judged more harshly in some senses. Um, you know, the better a humble husbandman who serves God than a proud philosopher. Uh, so pray for me, pray for me that I, I don't fall and become proud and go to hell because I'm on YouTube talking about my knowledge or whatever. What is my knowledge? What is this? It's, it's nothing. Um, I think that this, this, this chapter really convicts all of us though. Um, leave off that excessive desire of knowing because there's found therein much distraction and deceit. Um, the, when we, this is the, the vice of curiosity. This is a difficulty that we, we are placed in, in this modern world, because the vice of curiosity is an excessive desire for knowing things that are not proper for your salvation or your state in life. So, you know, we're, we're all bombarded by news all the time. We're bombarded by uh, what did Pope Francis say today? What did he say in his homily? What does his Twitter say? And we're bombarded by all this knowledge, which is not necessary for our salvation. It's not necessary for any, any layman Catholic salvation to resolve all the theological difficulties that exist out there. It's not up to us as laymen and women to resolve, did Vatican II err in the faith is Vatican II the cause or is it the implementation of Vatican II? Uh, should this or that, all these different controversies, it's not up to us. We need to focus on saving our soul. Now, obviously at Meaning of Catholic, we discuss these things, but we're trying to provide a basis for a charitable and fruitful conversation. We're not trying to actually resolve the problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these things will be resolved by official theologians of the church. They'll be resolved by the ecclesiastical authorities. As laymen and women, we just want to be filled with the confidence to pursue what we should be pursuing. What is our responsibility, if not our own soul and the souls of our spouses and children? That's our responsibility, and we shouldn't burden ourselves anymore with anything else that is beyond our responsibility. And this is, I think this is a great freedom. It's a relief. For us to meditate on the fact that we just don't need to figure out all those things and don't try to burden yourself to try to figure out all the different things unless you're particularly called to that unless you are trying to work those things out uh, but this is the difficulty because uh for me obviously i work my my work is online and i everybody's talking about the latest thing with pope francis even though in my view and I think in the view of the imitation of Christ, we should we just shouldn't be talking about all those things. We should be talking talking about the spiritual life. You know, this is this is why we do this weekly show. And then, you know, I think I complained last week, you know, this is this is a this show is not very popular. And I think that that's that shows that our priorities are off. You know, this should be the most popular show. We should be talking about 
what the spiritual life is, you know, it should be at the forefront of our minds, but instead what's on the forefront of people's minds is, you know, the latest news and things like that. So I think that this really, this, this chapter two really convicts me. It may convict you. Um, I think, and then it's also very difficult. I think having a humble opinion of oneself, it's very difficult. Um, but I think there's some really good tips here. If thou should see another openly sin or commit some heinous crime, yet thou oughtest not to esteem thyself better, because thou knowest not how long thou mayest remain in a good state. So obviously it brings to mind the parable of our Lord in which our Lord said, uh, you know, the, the Pharisee goes up to pray and the publican says, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Pharisee says, God, I thank thee that I'm not like this, this sinner. I fast twice a week and everything like that. So um, this is a very good tip. So if you see somebody sinning, you think, wow, I could also fall into that very quickly if God would take away his grace from me, for example. Uh, and this is something that is a punishment for pride. If we become proud, if God has given us the grace to, to be in a state of grace and we're, we're not committing mortal sin, that's a great grace. And so, but if we see a sinner committing sin and we look down on that sinner and say, like the Pharisee, thank you, God, that I'm not like a sinner uh, in a proud way, God may punish us. He may take away his grace and then cause you to cause indirectly. He's not the cause of sin, but he would take away his grace as a punishment. And you may then fall into sin to humble you so that you don't become proud. Um, another great tip that I've heard from is in, in the stories of the desert fathers is when you are, you might be in a group of people, for example, uh, you know, maybe you're in a, in a secular environment, you have to be in a secular environment as much as secular people. And you're, you're scandalized by them acting secular, you know, whatever. And, uh, or, you know, we've, we've been talking about this a little bit in the guild chat, you know, what if you're going to a Novus Ordo mass and this particular Novus Ordo mass is maybe a suburban right mass where, you know, a lot of these people are, you know, older of the older generation, the boomer generation, you know, they're singing music. That's rather, rather sappy, for example, and you're just kind of put off by that. Um, well, here's a tip from the desert fathers, the desert fathers say, one thing to repeat is you say all of these people will, will inherit the kingdom of heaven, but I alone will not have mercy on me, a sinner. So you look around and you say all of these people will inherit the kingdom of heaven, but I alone will not have mercy on me, O Lord. And the, the point is to meditate on the fact that you don't know the future and all of these people could actually achieve holiness somehow. Uh, whether that's in their simple faith, you know, maybe they're just praying, you know, they're, they're singing these sappy songs, but they're doing it with a simplicity and childlike faith that you don't have. Maybe, maybe I'm a proud man. I'm, I'm feeling, uh, I'm acting like a Pharisee and I'm going to go to hell because I'm judging all of my brethren, you know, some boomer Catholic who just loves the Lord with a childlike faith and just doesn't understand all these things. Um, and they're praying their sappy songs or whatever, but because they have a childlike and humble of faith, it is more pleasing to God than my perfect Latin mass because I'm proud. Uh, a perfect Latin mass offered with pride is a stench in the nostrils of the Lord. Um, and so this is an important thing for us to meditate on when we consider humility. Um, and uh, so I find that to be very helpful for me personally. When I when I when I'm in a situation where I might be tempted to be scandalized by the behavior of people, um, whether that's Catholics or not Catholics, um, you know, you could be you could be really scandalized. You could be offended. You know, people could be actually sinning. You know, you could be you know very offended for the sake of the Lord. But at the same time, you need to realize that. If you are in a state of grace, that's an act of grace. That's a gift from God that he's given you. And he could take that away. He could punish you if you become proud. So I think these are great meditations for that. We, we got one comment here from Father John Brown, a true Jesuit. He says, uh, thank you for praying for priests. I think the key is to humbly share what you know, but avoid painting others in such a way that even their goodwill will be doubted. That's a great comment. Thank you, Father. really appreciate that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I really like what you just said, you know, um, 
we're just we just want to share what we know and uh we can't i think we need to as i as i said on the monday morning or the monday broadcast at one peter five we need to have the judgment of charity for everybody we have to really assume that everybody's doing their best with goodwill unless if and only if we find out that there's you know manifest evidence that there's bad will then we're we're kind of forced by our reason to conclude that there is bad will at that point but only if there's the manifest evidence um peace and joy says praying for you tim we need orthodox teachers and theologians like you to deepen our knowledge of the faith may god keep you humble and charitable thank you i appreciate that very much uh thank you for your prayers so with that that's that's all we have today I'm imitation of christ chapter two so we'll continue this i want to do this every wednesday just to try to promote the um um fellowship of saint anthony so I'm hoping I can do this on Wednesday mornings like this, but you know, kids happen. So can't always, uh, can't always make this schedule, but, uh, we'll, we'll try to do it every, every week, uh, on Wednesday. So let's offer up a Hail Mary and, and place our confidence in our lady to make our offerings acceptable to Christ, even though they are mixed with pride, mixed with different, um, the mixtures of our own self-will or our self-opinion, uh, our lady is capable. She will purify these offerings. And so we offer up this broadcast and this chapter two to our lady to purify it and through her to offer it to our God. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu omni adibus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Santa Maria Mate Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus. Nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Saint Anthony of the Desert, pray for us. Amen.